on the Liliuokalani Ridge, north of the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. You should be descending for a few hours. Actually, just one, I think. It's a fairly oh. shallow dive. Is It's a shallower one. Okay. Yeah. I missed that. It'll be approximately one hour. <laughs> Ground fault and the craft went away. Three meg. That's good. I must say uh, we're thrilled to get back in the water. It's been uh, pretty rough out there. We've been moving farther and farther north, trying to outpace the, the storm that was in stopping us from getting uh, getting our dives in. So we are actually at the farthest northern point of where we had planned um, on diving this particular leg of the expedition. But based off of the uh, topography we're looking at, the bathymetry, it was looking pretty exciting. Do you want to mention something about that, Val? Sure. So uh, this is an interesting uh, seamount chain in a number of ways, um, in part because of the uh, uh, some of the biological communities that um, we're hoping to learn more about here, but also uh, how these volcanoes came to be. And uh, the seamount chain um, is doing something a little bit unusual, maybe not entirely, but it does uh, split in from one chain uh, up to the north, and as you move further south, it starts to split into two chains. So where we are right now is um, where that volcanic chain is just starting to split apart, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, look at both sides of that uh, and get an idea if there are any geochemical uh, differences and any other sorts of features uh, structurally that might be of uh, interest to scientists who study how these uh, volcanic chains uh, erupt and form and behave on the seafloor and what stories they might be able to tell us about the inside of the earth where uh, those, those melts originally came from. Oh, we can, uh, yeah, we can go faster. Oh, sorry. So as we're starting our descent, if we could uh, do some intros for our team in the control van. I'll start. Uh, my name is Christopher Klaus. I'm a science communication fellow uh, from New Hampshire. And uh, I'll be interfacing between the public and our control team all right, uh, my name is Justin Umholtz, and I actually work for Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument at our uh, Moku Papapa Discovery Center located in Hilo, Hawaii. So hopefully we are going to be opening up to the public here in the next month and would love to welcome you there. And we serve as the window to the monument since these northwestern Hawaiian Islands are quite remote. Um, I'm an educator, so I get to learn from all of these wonderful folks and then try to figure out how to interpret that uh, at our Discovery Center. All right, and I am Val Finlayson. I'm one of the lead scientists on this expedition, and um, I specialize in um, geology and geochemistry and uh, work on other seamounts and other hotspot tracks like we think this might be, um, sort of all around the Pacific. And I try to understand uh, where these seamounts came from, you know, why they're here on the seafloor, and how. Uh, that can tell us some stories about how the inside of the uh, Earth works, how a living planet works. So, um, yeah, I'm very excited to see uh, uh, what this ridge looks like that we're diving on today. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm Leela. I am sitting in the data logger seat right now. Um, on this cruise, I'm the science manager. So I'm just helping um, work with the science team on board and all the other team members that we have uh, in various roles to help accomplish our science goals. And I'm also sort of overseeing some of the the logging of everything that we're seeing on the seafloor um, and, and keeping track of all the samples that we take. 
Um, and when I'm not on the ship, I'm a graduate student at Oregon State University, where I study deep sea microbes and animals that live inside and on the seafloor, um, specifically at methane seeps, which are a very different kind of habitat than what we're diving on today, um, but which sort of exist along along the perimeter of most continents, every continent uh, in the world. I think Christopher is going to see who in the front row is available. They're still sorting some things out. Yeah, this tends to be um, one of the more intense parts of the dive because uh, we're just getting the uh, ROVs um, uh, settled in and they're in the early stages of their descent toward the seafloor. So um, this is a very busy time for the pilots. and. Uh, yeah, we're hoping to talk to them a little bit once they're ready. In the meantime, if you want to learn a little bit more about this particular leg of the 2022 season, uh, if you go to nautiluslive.org, uh, assuming you're already there listening to us, uh, if you click up on the Expeditions tab, look for 138, and you will see the Lu'ua'ea Ahiki'ike Kumu uh, leg, which is we are on, and it's it's a follow up to some mapping and previous exploration farther south in the monument. The other thing we haven't really talked about is what Dr. Orcutt is focusing on. Would you want to take a stab at that, Val? Sure. Um, I probably can't explain it uh, as succinctly as she can, but. Um, Dr. Orcutt is uh, interested in uh, microbial communities that grow on these seamounts and uh, their their relationship with um, with uh, what we see with some of the rocks and uh, in the manganese crusts that um, build up on these rocks and uh, kind of understanding uh, how these populations on these uh, seamounts basically work. So while uh, I'm sure the, the long time Nautilus Live followers, you're used to folks looking for those really nice angular rocks, which help with dating purposes. Uh, we're also gonna be looking for some very kind of crusty, uh, mangan ferro manganese kind of highly eroded stuff or highly- uh, Highly altered. Altered stuff, thank you. Yeah, so what I'm after as a geochemist, uh, along with the rest of uh, the team that I work with, who are uh, onshore scientists for this cruise. Uh, we're interested in rocks that have been relatively well preserved, you know, not too heavily altered. Oh, excuse us there. All right, we're still doing some checks here and there. So um, when they do that, all of us in the back row uh, are gonna pause what we're talking about so they can talk about what they need to. So anyway, um, yeah, what we're looking for geologically are uh, fresher rocks that let us uh, hopefully get some good age determinations on them, as well as uh, an idea of um, you know what part of the mantle uh, these these uh, these came from. And Dr. Orcutt is uh, interested in rocks that are much more heavily altered because uh, uh, this is where we tend to find uh, some of these microbial communities growing. So we can get an idea of the biodiversity and, uh, relationship of uh, rock and bacteria. Yeah. And for all the coral and deep sponge fans out there, uh, yesterday, or the last dive we did, was incredible. We had some really beautiful, um, uh, almost forests of corals in particular. So I am very hopeful we'll be seeing some, some more uh, corals and hopefully more sponges this time around. I think we're going to be like a little shallower than the peak peak coral sponge density zone, at least that Chris Kelly mentioned. But hopefully we still see some maybe some like shallower species. Oh, that's a good reminder. Yeah. So we're going to be yeah around uh, 1,360 uh, meters, so 1,360 meters deep on this dive, and we'll probably from there be moving up about 150 meters along a ridge feature. Yep, and uh, compared to the previous dive that we did, uh, that's about 1,200 meters higher today. So quite a bit shallower. 
And we may be along the edge of sort of a slump of some kind or landslide or, or a really steep feature to our west. I'm, I can't orient myself to the dive plan right now, but uh, on one side. Or we, north, the north. We, the, yeah, the east, eastern, northeastern <laughs> end. Let's just say Let's every just single say. side of the <laughs> thing. One of them will be right. 25% um, chance of being right. Yeah, I, I, think it's, I think it's the east side that is, uh, or northeast, I forget the exact here. angle. Oh no, you're I right. I was just east, looking at it five side. minutes ago. Yeah, so there's there's some unusually uh, steep topography that um, we're hoping to get some eyes on today on one side of the ridge and uh, kind of on both sides of the ridge. And it will be interesting to see if we can tell a little bit about the um, a little bit about the uh, history of this kind of structure, whether or not we see any uh, evidence that this could be some sort of a fault or like a really old collapse. Um, it will also be interesting to see what kinds of uh, uh, what, what kinds of corals or uh, sponges or uh, other animals are that uh, may or may not be growing on the sides of those cliffs too, and whether when or not it's different on either side. One thing uh, that Ryan actually reminded me of downstairs is that this depth is sort of towards the oxygen minimum zone in this area. So that might also control um, what we do and do not see in terms of fauna. That's a good point. Yeah, in an oxygen minimum zone, it's a little harder for uh, some of these uh, creatures to survive. So yeah, we'll, uh, we're not really sure what we're gonna see yet, but that's why we're gonna do this. So I'm excited to learn bit more about um, what the biology looks like down here as well, given that I work on the rocks. I don't really know a whole lot about things that are alive. In addition to our rock collection, we're also going to be taking some uh, water samples for eDNA. That'll give us a clue as to what some of the organisms are whose cells are out there in the water column, even if we don't get to see them. And if it is prudent, uh, we may take some biological samples as well. We are currently outside the Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument, um, so our restrictions are not quite the same as they were for the last dive, but also uh, we are being conscious of only taking samples if we can't identify them visually. Hey, um, Suleiman, would you mind, I think Rennie said that he just, he loaded in the, the new bathy. Would you mind zooming out briefly so we can see what that looks like in high pack? Oh yeah, that's really yeah. steep. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, pretty cool. I guess it's similar, similar to the other side, but just a little bit more dramatic. And it goes down, mm -hmm. plateau sort of lower. Um, I don't know if that's up on the quad right now. Who's who's down there, Rhett? Rhett, is it possible to have high pack up on the quad? High pack survey, or yeah, survey.
we've got a a few entries in the uh, pun category here. Uh, one of our viewers says they're urchin to see all our puns. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> Keep them coming. <laughs> uh, someone asked, how do you cut a C in half with a seesaw? Oh, my God. <laughs> So there's a question about our uh, ROV names. Um, Argus is the one of the ROVs we typically use. Uh, today, Argus is on deck for some maintenance, and we're using a similar ROV called Atalanta. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit smaller, but does just about the same thing. So it's nice to have some backups on board. Yep, basically we have to uh, be ready to make as many repairs as we can on the ship since we're, you know, days out. <laughs> we're days out from the nearest port and, uh, you know, we'd like to try to keep things going as smoothly as we can during these without having to go back and forth a bunch. So there's a, there's a lot of redundancy uh, kind of built into... Uh, the, the equipment and the, the spare parts that we carry. Well, we had a question about what other types of rocks we might expect to see other than basalt. Any hunches on that? Uh, we're not going to see a whole lot other than basalt or um, stuff that started off as basalt. And if it stayed in the magmatics like in the magma chamber long enough it could uh, differentiate into uh, maybe something else like a basaltic andesite maybe something that has a little more uh, silica in it than uh, uh, what a typical basalt does but that is not something we run into super often um, sometimes we end up with uh, some of these seamounts some other stuff that um, is similar to a basalt, but it might have, like a true basalt, but it might have some, like more sodium and potassium uh, in it. Sometimes even less silica, but that depends a lot on, uh, you know, how, how much or how little melt was generated off of this plume material in the mantle and erupted. Uh, dominantly, it's going to be basalt. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes on these, uh, uh, on uh, like the tops of sea mounts, uh, where they may have been above water or very, or in very shallow water for part of their history, uh, we might see um, like carbonate caps from like uh, uh, atoll forming corals. So you do run into that now and again, but um, yeah, mainly, mainly you see a lot of basalt lavas. This is Nav. We have another viewer who. Can we get the ship moves on bearing zero for zero? 60 meters. We have another viewer who. Uh, yes, please. Uh, speed uh, point, uh, zero point 0.2 of a knot. Thank you. He mentioned. Uh, that the, the C didn't say anything to his wife when he left for work. He just waved at her. <laughs> Jeez. And why did the shark spit out the clown? Because he tasted funny. <laughs> That's just bad. <laughs> That's I don't know. So good. If there were sea clowns, I'd be a little nervous. 
was clownfish. You do get clownfish. I don't think we'll see any clownfish here. We're way too deep. Those guys like shallower water. Good old coral reefs. All right, it looks like we are at about 370 meters, and our ultimate goal is to get down to about 1,361. I believe that was a question that came up. Did that fix it? All right, our intrepid Christopher has fixed the chat issue, so it should be green and ready to type in if you have any comments or questions. Yeah, was something I didn't think I would say too often, but I think I actually had too many potatoes at lunch. Uh -huh. They were good. <laughs> the JoJo's. <laughs> Amazing food is definitely one oh, yeah. commonality on this ship. For sure. Yep, we are very well fed here. <laughs> Another one of our viewers asked, why was the sand wet? Because the seaweed. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> It takes a second. That took a long time. <laughs> yeah, to I didn't get that. Get that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you get when you cross a shark and a snowman? Uh, abominable. No, I don't know. <laughs> Frostbite. Frostbite. Oh, Where are they getting these from? Don't know, but they're good. <laughs> Keep us entertained. Why do seagulls fly over the sea? To get to the other side? Is that part of the joke? Not this one. <laughs> because if they flew over a bay, they'd be bagels. <laughs> bagels. Oh, bagels. <laughs> They're pretty good at stealing bagels if you let them. <laughs> There's some true. seagulls with no fear of humans. They'll just come right up and take your food. I've had that happen. Me too. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the yeah. This Actually, yeah. toggle. Okay, off. Actually, a on. highlight above the surface has been that we've been followed by a uh, half dozen Laysan albatross, or moli as they're known in Hawaii. And I think I saw one uh, black footed albatross as well, the ka'upu. That was really cool. They have a huge wingspan. Yeah. A lot of them have nesting colonies in this part of the ocean. Yeah, actually, the largest nesting colony of the of the Laysan is in Papahanaumokuakea on islands such as uh, Midway Atoll, um, also known as Pihemanu, uh, Laysan Island, Kamole, a couple others. Mm -hmm. They're very remote, and have nice, flat, op uh, protected areas, and uh, very centrally located I in don't the like Pacific. Is that for me? Because I don't want it. <laughs> oh, Rod. <laughs> Blew out the gauge. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> like, I can't see with it. <laughs> Control alt, please take that away. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I'm out of there. <laughs> it's 
It's definitely getting darker water. Yep, we're coming up on 500 meters. So about a, a third of the way down. Real quick, a uh, about... RV, Go whenever ahead. you have a second, would you mind um, turning on the still cam? Oh, the still cam should be on. It's on already? Sweet. Yeah. Let me know if you want me to cycle power. I think I'm good, but I'll let you know. Thank you. Raj. And a question about what the function of Argus is. Argus or Atalanta in this case, we're, we're diving with Atalanta. Um, the ROV in between the Hercules ROV and the ship uh, does a few things. Um, one, it gives us some extra light and an extra camera perspective. But a bigger thing is that um, because it's tethered in the middle, it absorbs a lot of the bouncing from the ship. And so you'll notice that when we get down there, uh, Atalanta will be, the camera view will be kind of bobbing up and down the way the ship does at the surface. But it gives a little slack for Hercules, so Hercules can stay nice and still on the seafloor. And we can have a lot more control over it. getting a little bit of small fish or something floating around in there. Yeah. Caught it out of the quarter. So if you're just joining us, we are descending on an unnamed seamount in the Liliokalani Lili Ridge. And we're going to be looking for some Bridge. rock, rock samples. Map. Uh, you can hold position here, please. Thank you. We have two lead scientists on board. And we're going to be looking for uh, some geological samples and some biological samples that are... Yes. So we will hold position here. Hopefully the ROVs will land over right on the target and they will start swimming down. Roger that. <coughs> We're going to be looking for some biological samples of uh, the bacteria that are growing on these manganese nodules or ferromanganese nodules at the bottom of the sea here. Oh my goodness, we have the jokes coming in. Why do sharks only swim in salt water? Because pepper makes them sneeze. <laughs> Things are getting worse. I don't think that I <laughs> could like ever get any of these without, without you telling us the answer. <laughs> Another comment is that all these jokes are cracking me up. Oh. Cracking. Jeez. <laughs> Who they cleans? just like to listen to us groan up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Who cleans the floor of the ocean? Mm. A mermaid. <laughs> I was going to say cleaner, Ras. Uh, cleaner. I know. I was thinking too literal, too. <laughs> too literal. <laughs> Way too that's what you get when you get this many scientists in a room. <laughs> yeah. like dad joke central right now. <laughs> we do have a question about when we expect to see Argus back in action. Do we have uh, any guesses on that? Or is that still up in the air? Uh, that's um, up, to, up to our bosses. <laughs> All right. So uh, no ETA on that, but um, yeah, stay tuned. Atalanta's doing a, a good job filling in. 
So we're lucky we have that back up. Yeah, not very often you can do a full vehicle swap and, you know, have everything be, be all good and Gucci gang, as they say. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'll look down a little bit. I'll center it up for you again. Yep. And a question about how long the tether is between the two ROVs. 20 meters? Yeah, this one's probably, uh, what is this one, Kylie? Do you 30 meter? We switch out the length of the tether depending on the, the ops mode. So we can get them shorter or get them longer. Question about our control van, how many people we have. Usually it's between uh, eight and 10. I think we have 10 at the moment. Back here in the back row, we have our science team. And up in the front row, we have the folks that are doing all the driving and coordinating. And our video engineer is up in the front as well. I'm going to start slowing down again. Sure. Sure thing. Chris Kelly is in the chat and uh, wants to know if uh, Jess is winning any cribbage games on this <laughs> cruise. <laughs> Wouldn't he like to know? Chris is also a cribbage shark, so uh -oh. I would say way more than I. Started betting soda at the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> We've been playing cribbage. Don't worry, Chris. So our planned descent speed is about uh, 20 meters per minute. It's about as fast as you can walk or so. I can't sew that fast. No. <laughs> <laughs> I can't sew that fast. <laughs> Good one. And we're coming up on 700 meters soon, and that means we're approximately halfway to the start of our uh, site, or start of our uh, track, excuse me. And if I remember correctly, we have eight waypoints evenly spaced, and we have an eight hour bottom time more or less, I think, so. Yep, oh, what do we got here, jellyfish? Mm. Yeah, look at that. The weight points are sort of like um, along the inflection points. I don't think that they're evenly spaced, but we will try and stop every once in a while, every yeah. 500 meters or so, and to think about sampling. Oh. Is that a, Sulaiman, do you want to add in the 500 meter ones along the track? Add what? Remember how yesterday we did like the 500 yes. meter? Points. We would like to do the same to the south, I guess, right? Is that, was I that think that would be a good yeah? idea. Okay. Yeah. So the waypoints are helpful because um, uh, those those are just kind of... Uh, so the next one should be over here. Mm -hmm. And if I see, it's about uh, 340 meters. 340. Okay. okay. Would you like to keep this one or go for the 500 ones? I think maybe like add additional 500 meter ones, have like one labeled 500 and then 1,000 and then 1,500. Yeah, so we're setting waypoints along the dive track. Um, that kind of helps us keep track of uh, uh, how much time we're spending uh, within each segment because this is gonna be about a 12 hour total dive, including uh, 
time in water to time out of water. And uh, we're expecting, you know, if all goes well, somewhere around eight, nine so, hours. So we have waypoint one, 300 okay. fish. Waypoint two, it's about, uh, about 460 five. meters. Okay, so almost. that's like 500 ish. Yes. So we can treat waypoint two as like the first 500 mark, sort of. We'll yeah, I'm, we'll I'm fine with just going yeah. by the waypoints. Oh, yeah, you don't, so you don't need it every 500 vertical no. meters. You don't care about that. No, I don't think so. Okay, all right, never mind. We'll, we'll, get, a, we'll get enough guidance yep. from what we already have in the system, I think. Cool. Waypoint three is about 600 meters again. So we have okay. the waypoint, yep. Perfect. It works for me. So yeah, yep. we're going to be moving much slower on this dive than we did a couple of days ago. Um, the weather conditions topside are uh, much more favorable, so we can really take time and uh, uh, survey uh, pretty thoroughly along our track instead of kind of having to book it, see what we could, get what samples we could before we had to abort. So this will be a much more uh, gently paced dive today. Sounds good, though. Mm-hmm. No need to hurry if we don't have to. So one of the other interesting things is because we're uh, going to be working our way up a uh, pretty pretty sharp ridge, one thing we'll be interested in looking at uh, every now and again on the dive is what we can see down the uh, western and eastern slopes off of the ridge. And that will help us get an idea of um, you know, some of the structural history, hopefully, of this ridge, as well as uh, seeing where, hopefully, some corals and sponges, if, they, if they're able to thrive at this depth, um, what those populations look like, what the densities look like, you know, diversity, all that. So, um, yeah, can't wait to see what we find here. And because we're going to be about 1,200 meters shallower than we were in the previous dive, things may well look very different. We have several questions about the differences between Atlanta and Argus. Um, what is Atlanta's intended use uh, when it's not subbing in for Argus? And uh, how is the tether going to be different between Atlanta and Herc as opposed to Argus and Herc? The tether is the same, um, but I think in general, Atalanta is used for Little Herc in the same way Argus is used for Big Herc. But the tether is the exact same one that we had previously had on Argus. It does, it, and Atalanta is just lighter. And another question about what are all the white dots we're seeing on the blue background here? Plankton, marine snow. Yeah. There Fish are poop. Lo lots of zooplankton that are alive and small um, that we're seeing. Like Sorry, exports. Fish e exports. And then uh, some of this is, is sort of like dead organic matter that's just sinking. And uh, when you're in waters below more productive areas, you'll usually see more marine so snow. So sometimes, like off the coast coast of um, California or Oregon, we've gone through uh, we've gone through areas with much more marine snow than this. And a few questions about uh, things that might have gone wrong in the past in terms of uh, do things get stuck on the tether or uh, do we have any uh, accidents or anything where our ROVs run into things? Uh, we try to mitigate that as best as we can, but sometimes you do run into unexpected environmental things down there or, um, yeah, I mean, the, the nice thing is that it's troubleshooting on the go always. Um, 
But yeah, sometimes you do run into if there's, well, you try not to. You try to avoid <laughs> everything with your sonar as best you can. Um, but one big hazard for ROVs and for any type of underwater vehicle is fishing gear. And that, uh, like ghost gear, so gear that gets uh, lost at sea and isn't recovered, um, has a lot of floating lines that you can imagine is a, a thruster's worst nightmare. Um, so we try to avoid those situations, but those are things that don't show up on sonar. And I guess is a good a good plug for people to clean up after themselves when they're out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there is there is um, random things that you find underwater, and you try to mitigate as best you can the risk to the vehicles uh, or risk to personnel on board if it's coming aboard. We definitely saw some marine debris on our last dive, wrapped around some coral at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. It's very surprising you can make it so far out here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the northwestern Hawaiian Islands are kind of like a little comb with all the shallow reefs there, so um, being sort of at the center of the north, uh, north Pacific gyre, uh, the circling currents we get, we get a lot of marine debris washing up in the, on those reefs and on the islands themselves. Yeah. One of our big uh, management issues. Have another joke. Ooh, yes. A, a woman is walking along a beach when she sees a man splashing around feverishly in the ocean. Help, shark, help, he cries. <laughs> The woman laughs because she knows the shark will never help that man. <laughs> <laughs> I like that that one was a whole story. What should you do if you're addicted to seaweed? Oh <laughs> my gosh. No. Seek help. Seek oh. help. Seek help. <laughs> I have another question about what are you studying in the bacteria microbiome from this dive? I think Beth is looking at lots of different things, which include like what what role the, the bacteria or microbes in general might be playing in forming the ferromanganese crusts that we see, and also um, questions about sort of what ecosystem services we call them, but what what services those microbes are providing. And although although the the ferromanganese crusts inside the monument are not the target of potential mining in the future. Um, there are other regions with crusts uh, that are so similar um, that are the target of deep sea mining. And so um, Beth and her lab, the Orcut lab, uh, want to sort of figure out what the, what the economic value of those services that the microbes just inherently provide is and what would, what would humankind need to, what is humankind giving up uh, in in sort of destroying those habitats by mining them. Um, yeah. And just to clarify there, there is no mining allowed or resource extraction allowed within the Marine National Monument boundaries, but the ocean is all connected. So part of it is understanding kind of the overall impact. So we just, I just looked up and saw a fish off the corner of the screen, but I missed it. Oh, there he is. Hmm. That was a weird angle to be swimming at. <laughs> Looks like there's a few of them. Yeah. Party. Little rat tail fish. We have folks tuning in today from four different continents, representing 11 different countries. 
So hello to everyone. Thanks for joining us on our descent. I have another question. Do the ROVs have windshield wipers? No. No windshields. No wipers. Chris Kelly was saying that that uh, eel-like fish we just saw is a um, cruet of some type. Which, uh, looking in the uh, ID guides that are publicly available uh, on the NOAA website, if you type in NOAA Benthic ID guide, uh, you can see, or also uh, if you type in SOEST DARC ID guard, which is through University of Hawaii, you can check those out. Um, so, really briefly, before we approach the seafloor, um, would you guys just mind running through with the direction of the first waypoint for us? Running through the direction? Okay, so... Uh, yep, yeah, like a south, it looks like so a south So we'll start it over here. The ship already here. It depends if you land in this area, that's great. If not, then you have to swim a little bit on bearing 030 mm -hmm. for, like... 20, 30 meters, but I think you will, we will land, you will land somewhere over here, very close, and then on completion we'll be going to south. Do south? Yes. Roger. I will uh, just zoom out to, for you to have an idea. So we'll go from here all the way to there. Okay, sure. And then we'll keep going. So they want the, they want the gully of that little rift, that little valley, or does it, do we have to go back to that initial launch position, or is it good wherever we come down? No, we need to start from here. Okay. Yeah, up there and then go down. Okay, Raj. Then do south. Roger that. We have a question about how long our descents usually take. Um, that all depends on how deep we're diving. Uh, yesterday's, or yesterday, two days ago, when we had our dive, uh, it took around two hours. This one's about one hour dive to go to about 1,300 meters. And one more. I'm going to slow down. Roger. Okay. That flicker. Oh, it's in the winch cam. That's interesting. I thought it was a shadow. Okay. I'm slowed. Roger. You have a question about how far eDNA can travel. Mm. And after we sample it, can we take it uh, hundreds or thousands of miles and still be able to use it? Oh, okay. So how far can the eDNA travel once we've collected it? I believe that's the question, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so once we've collected it, we... So oh, we have... Sorry, I was wrong. It was the other way traveling around. to the Niskin bottle, not... Sorry. Okay, sure. Um, okay, so I guess you're, you're asking about how far, like once it's sloughed up an animal, how far can it travel? Um, the temperatures are pretty cold down where we are, so, uh, you know, like four degrees Celsius. E D DNA, when it's, uh, you know, no longer in a living organism and when it's in warmer temperatures can degrade uh, pretty quickly after a while. But, so it, that's kind of, there's not like a, a point blank answer to that question, but um, it can travel pretty far. So it can, it can, it'll stick around for a little while because it's pretty cold. Um, and it can travel pretty far depending on if the water that it's in is flowing in a current or not. Um, 
and, and how far and fast that current is flowing. So you don't always know when you collect any DNA sample that you're getting DNA from, you know, you're not getting just DNA from the coral that you're looking at right now. You're getting also sort of upstream DNA from wherever the current is flowing. Um, and so there have also been some some studies where you take take water samples from both like right in front of a coral and then also downstream of, of the that coral um, garden okay. sort of and compare those. So we're not like totally sure always what DNA we're collecting and how far it's traveled to get there. But the hope is that um, that you'll capture DNA from an assemblage like the one that you're looking at. And that at least like the most recent, uh, least degraded DNA that you'll end up being able to sequence is from, from the communities that you're closest to. A few questions about where are the the best things that we found on a dive, living or dead. True, uh, mm. but uh, let's ask them. Yeah, yeah let's ask them, because um, I got the fr from Dwight. They would like to to really start from here. I think they they will uh, collect, but we can ask them. Back rows. Was it important, Val, to collect from right inside the launch site? Yes. That's the question. Ideally, we would like to stay on those waypoints, but are we having trouble holding? No. Uh, oh, no. We've yeah, just no. streamed out. We're good. Oh, as, okay. as Just as we were descending. We're now sort of like in between that. And originally, waypoint one was is, is over here, and then we added a launch one, two that's sort of like in the dip. Oh, here. OK, OK. Yeah, but also the, the question is just like, because we're in the right orientation to just kind of continue forward and just have Atalanta spin around, so um, to continue to the first waypoint. But um, yeah, so sometimes the launch site is soft, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. if you guys want from that spot, we'll go to that spot and we'll flip the vehicles around and then do it again. So either way, just wanted to check. I um, think that'll be okay. To just keep going on without going to the launch s spot? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Raj. Or do you want to wait until we like actually hit the bottom and see if you'd like to go further north and then go down or continue down? All right. Uh, yeah. So the, yeah, question is we can also make the decision once we hit the seafloor if you'd like. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, let's see, what, let's see what it looks like when we get there. Okay. How about, yeah, okay. So maybe for, for the way that we set up, um, I'll set up to just orient myself to go north then, and then um, we can hit that site. It sounds more, more, yeah. Yeah, let's just do okay. okay. Roger. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It just helps with us, like, uh, orienting ourselves as we approach the bottom. Okay, yeah, understood. Thank you. Of course. We are getting close. Shall I go with the um, dead truck? Oh yes, no. Let's wait. Like yeah, fifty, yeah.
Anyone want to share their favorite thing they've seen on a dive? I saw a jumping anemone. That's the best thing I've ever seen Those on a dive. Those are crazy. That it was, cool. As far as I know, it's the only footage that exists of it actually jumping. Mm. Um, it's just called a, what's it called? A coralomorph. Cor cor a jumping coralomorph. The coralomorphs were jumping? Yeah, really? jumped. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's beautiful footage of it. Beautiful. Best thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it was. It looked like, because, you know, the anemone is like, you know, chill. They just exist. And then, like, this one, it was, like, swimming through the water like Medusa. That is wild. It was beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> the coral morphs are actually, like, not really... I was just double checking this because it's in a it's in a different like taxonomic folder in our in our, uh, our database in our database than the actual the like true anemones, and so it's actually more closely related to to scleractinian corals like reef building corals than it is to anemones, um, hmm. which is kind of cool. I have a question about um, what we do in order to uh, keep our area clear of whales or to make sure that our sonar doesn't interfere with marine mammals in the area. What was that? How do we uh, make sure that our sonar doesn't interfere with marine mammals? You want to take that one, Suleiman? Uh, the, the, the question was how do we make sure that the sonar doesn't interfere with marine mammals. We have a, like, there's a marine mammal startup mode on the on the EM302 uh, multi-beam sonar that we use. Um, so it kind of, like, ramps up the power slowly over multiple minutes. Um, and then I believe also in our, Justin, in our uh, permit, we're meant to not turn it on and off abrupt too abruptly too often, right? Because that also can Correct. disturb marine mammals. Yeah. And if there is any uh, any marine mammals sighted in the area, then we stop operations in a safe mm -hmm. way and wait for them to pass. From uh, what I'm reading here, too, the the multi-beam sonar is very short directional acoustic pulse. So, um, based off of existing studies by the Navy, U.S. Navy. Um, its impact has been seen as very minimal on marine mammals. That is actually a, a big issue these days, and um, through the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries, there's uh, quite a bit of research coming out in collaboration with other organizations. If you look up uh, the National Marine Sanctuaries and Sank Sound, you can learn more about it. I believe it's sanctuary.noaa.gov. I don't know what that just was. This plane just flew up saying altitude 106. Oh, I missed it. So the trouble is you look away for a second and something crosses the screen and descends. Mm -hmm. Three right. beams. So we're a little over 100 meters above uh, the sea floor. So. Yeah, four beams, 400 meters altitude. That's mm -hmm. pretty good. Yep. Interesting. That looked more like a rat tail, but it's so I hard to tell from that. Missed it. Yeah. I gotta move the screen out of the way. There <laughs> we go. We try and put it back on the porch there. Thanks. And then maybe we can get one of the lower screen video. You wanna put the lower? Okay. Just, yeah, your cam.
So this is another busy uh, time for the pilots. So Roger. we're going to let them get themselves uh, all set up. You guys looking good. Shall I do the dead track or not yet? Yeah, let's let's wait till the vehicles get under each, under each other. We get positional awareness here, and then you can go ahead and set it up. Okay. You are not no. Yeah, so we're gonna at about sixty meters altitude. We're gonna have all Spread. Atalanta all stop. And we're gonna bring Hark underneath, uh, okay. and then we'll get In visual front. contact. Okay. I got it. Um, ideally, actually, um, if we can do dead wreck, once we get visual contact with the seafloor, then we'll be stopped there for a minute anyway. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna come all stop and then we'll come down together. Mm -hmm. All right, I see myself in your camera. I'll get center screen and we can go on down again. It's nice the camera's not all flickery today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not going disco. And what's the approximate uh, bearing to that target there for the launch? 015? Um, bearing is 035. 035, Raj. Yep. Okay, you want to turn to 035? I think you will land over there, so. Raj. All right, I'm ready for you, Kylie. It looks like you are already there, so you don't have to. Roger that.
have a lot of comments coming in about other sightings of swimming serianthids. Right, we got visual contact of the ground. Oh, great. All right. Yay, bottom. <laughs> and we did land exactly on the area of launching. Awesome. So that's great. That's some Shall primo I? navigation. Mm-hmm. All right, and okay. what do we have? You ready for Sea star off the bat. Yeah, I'll mm -hmm. sit down here and you can okay. go ahead. Instant biology. Instant bio. Uh, just add water. The bottom is, what are all, where are all the white splotches? This is, oh, there are so many. Those are stars. There are small sea stars. Yeah. Okay, well, something to look at while we get all the systems set up. <laughs> um. Justin, if you wanted to come over here at some point, I can show you the still camera. You disappeared from here. Hmm. All right. Roger that. I'll park myself here, and we'll do a white balance. I will. Can I do another? Uh, because ahead. you disappeared. Yeah, go ahead. Want to... Oh yeah. Oh no, I was talking to Nav, but um, one moment, sorry. Uh, you don't have Doppler, or? Uh, let me check. Doppler is on. Okay, that's strange. Can I reset DVL? Yeah, y you're all clear. Go ahead. Okay. Excellent. Nice. Look at our sonar. Back row, so we are uh, right on the spot of the launching as we wanted to start. Are we going to do white balance and things like that? Yep, we just got comments to the craft now. Perfect. Okay, video, you can go ahead and push on in there a bit. Sorry, Kylie. Let me, actually, let me push up a little bit here. So we're running some calibrations on the ROV systems at the moment. So once that is all balanced, we'll um, be able to start uh, taking a look at uh, what's on the bottom here. Is that good there? Sure thing. Somewhere out here, probably, I can imagine. One second. Ugh. Please stand by. Is that better light on you guys? Do you mind if I look at the arm for the for the black balance there, the white balance? Thanks, Kelly. Roger that.
Got a question for our video crew. Roger that. They're wondering why we white balance. Hey, we white balance uh, because the camera doesn't really know how the lighting is or how uh, the general situation looks uh, automatically. Like if you are, you know, say in daylight or you're using, uh, you know, lights and a camera way down here, um, there can be some differences in how the spectrum that's present uh, interacts with the starfish is camera. Waiting. So uh, we shine it, we have it look at a thing that we know is white uh, in that given environment and set of conditions and we tell it this is what white looks like here. Uh, and that allows the camera to adjust um, all of the light that hits it for that standard. I wanna adjust this really quickly. All right. Uh, and then left looks good. Okay. On the pan and tilt? Oh yeah, on the pan and tilt. Yeah, it looks good. How's the up look? Up is... Disgusting. <laughs> oh, up, up's not bad. Up's a little fast, but not bad. Okay. Yeah, we can tune it down a little bit. Sorry, we just, we had made some adjustments on the hydraulic system, so we're just testing those out. No um, problem. And I'm just gonna get our sonars a little bit in order here, and we'll be off. All right, sounds good. All right, so do you guys just want us to go 180 and go to the southbound target? Yeah. Since we're pretty much over the launch site, or did you want to explore around here? Um, let's take a quick look around and uh, yeah, just see what we can see here. It looks mostly like a nodule field of some sort. But um, yeah, look, we can start moseying over to the first waypoint after that. Roger that. Chris, is there anything you want to look at? Hey, that should be decent. I have a feeling we that may want to look at a couple of the uh, sea stars. Oh, like the one dead ahead? Um, do we want to look at the one dead ahead, or do we want to look at one of the smaller ones? Oh, like the smaller one dead ahead? Oh, oh. We can we can zoom on both of them, if, <laughs> if possible. Yeah, let's take a look at both of those. Yeah. Um, you can go ahead and push on in on this wee guy. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Oh, he's cute. Look at that little one. Aw. Do you have that one up, Justin? That looks a lot like, uh, well, actually, I can't tell very well, but one of the slime stars, is that right? Slime star. There's a slime star? I don't know if I'm right there. I'm Let's trying to match it up with the ID. Kind of derms. OK, yeah, Chris wants stars. to look at both of them. So. Looks like there's a brittle star on the left. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Oh, what the one Good spot. Time. Uh, Chris was asking if we can put um, high pack up on channel three for a little while. Would that be okay? Uh, I can do that. All right, thank you. Does that look? Good? All right, is Chris good with this view of this little guy? And we'll look at another one. I think we captured that one. Yeah, yeah. Roger that. Full wide, please. A little hard to tell with the lighting. Go ahead, I know. I'm trying to flip through mm -hmm. too. Let's see if I can figure that out. Looks pretty close. All right, now which other one does yeah. he want? He wants this big guy or the small guy to the left? Um, um, we can zoom on the big one. Yeah, let's get the big one. Roger. Yeah, it does look sort of similar to that. Um, you're right, Justin. Terraster, Terrasterity at least. Oh, Chris says maybe a young Asthenactus. 
Was that the white one, Chris? All right, go ahead and push that in there, please. This looks sort of brazingit like. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there you go. That's a clever trick. I wouldn't have thought of that. All right. <laughs> Is now. <laughs> All right, are All we right. good with this video? I think so, yeah. Yeah, All right. I think we're good. Thank Pull you. Right, please. I think we're good to start moving to the first waypoint. Roger that. All right, let's do it. Thanks. Is that a fish in the background there? It is a fish. <laughs> um, all right, so what's going to be our... 190. 190, Raj. Yep. Once you're ready, let me know. I will ask the bridge. Roger that. Went around. Oh, yeah, Zoroaster. It does look like that, Chris. Raj. Go ahead. Zoroaster has common name Can rat tail what? star. Maybe because of the similarities between their arms and rat tail, yeah. rat tail fish. There are tails. a bunch of small stars scattered all over the bottom, or it mm -hmm. looks like stars. Those kind of oranges color. Yeah. Whole field. Yeah, a lot more sea stars in the first dive. I think I'm seeing more brittle stars. Is, are those the little red ones? We haven't really zoomed in on, on one of them, but there are a lot of little red things. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we could zoom in on, a, on one of those at some point. Right. Lots of these rat tails. Except that one looks almost, it has like a really um, see-through fin tail, tail fin. There's a lot going on just this, mm -hmm. in this one spot. And yeah, I'm curious about these like white patches. Yeah, they look like someone's living below and excavating. Mm -hmm. Ooh, maybe. Did you guys want to zoom on those? Is that a quick zoom on one of the, um, the red things? The little shrimps? Uh, I don't know if they're shrimps, whatever the like red, they kind of look more of heroid or C star E. Oh, I see the shrimp you're talking about. That the yeah. one you're looking at? Okay. No, not that. Like okay. the, the little red armed things we were seeing a lot of. Oh, yeah. I can't. I think they're really small. I can't pick them out from the start. Yeah, there's one oh, bottom there's left. One bottom oh, yep. left. Right yeah. there. Roger. Yeah, just so we make sure we get that logged. Sure thing. Thanks. All right, video, you want to zoom in there, center screen? Yeah, Kylie, of your wood. Cool. Thanks. Yep, yeah, thank sure you. Thing. Full wide, please. All right, Val, you want to skedaddle towards our first waypoint? Yeah, start moving that way. Reg. Pilots, we had a question about how long is the delay between giving a command and having it being followed out on the other end by the ROVs? It is pretty instantaneous, wouldn't you say, Clay? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm ready to start moving. The yeah. Bridge, this is not. What's this I right here? That too. Is that another? Uh, oh, yeah. Can we move on bearing legs. 190, That's another one of 50 those. meters? Oh, I just, oh the, the crab. It is with the zoanthid on the yeah, back, but I just thing. found the name of the cra the hermit crab, too, just a little bit ago. It is. Good, and push on in there, please, video. Just out for a walk. Do a little bump down here. One second, guys. It's that a pair. No. Ah. Parapagurus. Parapagurus. I don't know how to say that correctly. Sorry, one sec. 
squaring up my shack. There you go. Oh, that's oh, cool. Wait. Yeah. Hello. Who's eating who? <laughs> who is eating who? <laughs> yeah, I think it's just a mobile home. <laughs> Negative uh, and I have nothing. Thank you. It's a stare off now. That crab is wondering what this giant yellow crab is doing in its territory. Right. <laughs> you want to zoom in a little more there? Like who turned the lights on? Chunky arms. Yeah. Yeah. Lally, can you talk a little bit about why a crab might put a zoanthid on its back like that? <laughs> Just, uh, oh. Maybe more why a zoanthid might go on a crab's back like or that. All right, pull away, please. Probably, um, Come I do Is it beneficial in a feeding, from a feeding perspective, to have access to lots of different places? Maybe. <laughs> Chris, I don't know how many of your jokes you want made public. <laughs> <laughs> I think that Bridgerton content is always favorable. <laughs> Is it okay to make the speed 0.3 of a note? Oh. Point 0.3 is great, yeah. Thank you. Bridge, this is nav. You can make the speed point 0 0.3 of a note. Got another fish. Our fish. I actually don't know if that's a McCurrit. I think that it has like a really long nose, sort of. What were those ones called? Halosaur? Halosaur. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is could it you be go that? Ahead and start your zoom, Chris. Uh, maybe. Yeah, it's got such a long spiny nose. Yeah, it does look like. Got someone else crawling on oh, us too. Oh. Do you want porch light on? Showtime. Sure. Like Wait a head. minute. Do we know? Is that? Right? Is yeah. it? No, Oops. but it, has a, it just looks like it's a head. I know. It's just its head. It's not. <laughs> it's like a bulb actually with a tail attached. <laughs> wow, we've got some interesting for fish on this side. That's, yeah. that's a big nose on that guy. They're competing for the limelight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is so bulbous. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Chris is confirming Halosaur for the okay. for the. Lighter okay, purple. Back it away. You go ahead and pull wide, please. Chris, what about this other one? Mm -hmm. no. Thank you. It feels like that fish is doing the surveying instead of us. He's very curious. Oh, I'm seeing some rocks up at the top of the screen. Yeah. We have Ooh, another one okay. of those hermit crabs there. So we're starting to get out of this little trough, mm -hmm. and I guess it's starting to look interesting again. All right. Yeah. Chris is going to look up that blackfish uh, for us. Sure thing. That's the second uh, swanthid hermit crab. And this, what about this right there? Roger. That might be a third. In video, you want to push past the little silhouette on the outside? There you go. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, I think it is a third. It looks yeah. like it to me. Hermit. It's got the same beefy right arm. <laughs> right. Per, per, Perpagurus. Perpagurus. I don't know how to say that one. They're pretty good manganese crusts. Yeah. On these. It'll be interesting to see once we have some samples up top uh, whether these are whether these have thicker crusts on them or not. Might need to. Well, I think the sonar head might be backwards on Argus here. I see a handful Reg. more of those white sea stars that yeah. are probably the Hunrisha. Or is I think Herc's good, but I think Argus is in 180. 180 itself. Let's see. I'm not seeing too much that's loose here. Yeah. That all looks pretty firmly attached. So we won't try for a sample just yet. But um, when we get the opportunity, we'll try to grab something. Sure thing. Got a little fish right there. I don't know if these are just stocks. What do you think that is? That kind of light green. Let's see if that works better for the sonar there. Uh, sorry, uh, we were troubleshooting some stuff. What were you, what were you pointing at there? Oh, sorry, talking to Val. Uh, What's on the just right? Just seeing something light green there. Is that a crinoid or is that something else? 
Um, oh, sorry, I'm not near the telestrator. I'm just lower right. Yeah, sure. I think she means that right there. No, oh, maybe. It looks not like a crinoid from this angle. I love the formation. So There's two of them. Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please. Oh, yeah, do. there are two. Yeah, that oh, is it a, is it a, a pycnogonid? Oh, no, it is. It's a cr oh, crinoid. It's hard to tell from this angle if that's a crinoid. Yeah, it must be, right? With little small arms. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll and see star next to it. Oh, yeah, good eye. Thank you. Full wide, please. Already a lot going on with the biota here. Yeah, seriously. Shall we keep moving or would we like to stop over here? Um, let's keep moving. Okay. So I'll give another Hey, Jess. Ooh, given that, that we're thing. facing the same way. And a small spot. Bridge, this is not. Yeah, we get a little bit. Another move, same steps, please. Yeah, I would imagine that yours would... Yeah, we can always have you come down a little bit. What's going on here? Yeah, you wanna... Is that... Uh, is all your lights on? Oh, Raj, would you mind... I just want to make sure that's not like the tether coming apart there. Oh, okay. Thanks. Hidden by the tether, Crime Raj. Made. Okay, you're good. You can secure it. Now I know what it looks like. We didn't see any crinoids in the last dive, did we? We saw like one or two. We didn't see a lot. Right. I want to know what these green, you see the upper right hand corner? Yeah. It's like uh, yeah. this green right fauna there. that keeps coming up. I don't know what that is. Sure thing. Another Mercurid. All right, video, go ahead and push on in here, center screen. I don't even know. Is that like, is that a, an encrusting sponge? Is that a weird tunicate thing? Can't tell from here. Yeah, sorry, I don't have a good angle for you guys. Well, good. It's all right. There are a lot. We'll see more. <laughs> Boy, the texture's cool, though. Uh oh. Another couple sponges. That's oh, good. there we yeah. go. Balasoma, I think. I'll get out ahead here a bit so you guys have some time to poke and play at things. Is More that of an anatomy hanging things. out under there? Right there? Oh, looks like it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Plenty of sea stars. Oh, Beth is saying she's seen green gummy stuff on the rocks before that had formerly had octopus egg cases attached. Hmm. Wonder. Octopus eggs? Wow. I think that's another crinoid that's just going off the in the green, corner there. The green yeah. gummy things are everywhere. Oh, and what is this light whitey? Yeah. Looks like what all your rock sponge? is still fused, huh? Yeah. Go ahead and push on in there, please, center your screen. And there's plenty, plenty oh, of things sponge. to check out here. So that looks sort of like Ferrea or mm. hetero, uh, what is it, heterorete? Chris, you're gonna have to help me. It looks so delicate. Yeah, it's a beautiful structure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's what's the kind of yellowish thing behind the sponge? I can't tell. Oh. It almost looks like an arthropod of some it's kind. It's got an exoskeleton. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I'm gonna come full wide there, please. Actually. All right, let me get out in front of Argus again. Atalanta. <laughs> Need to know the names now. <laughs> a little bit of sponge and coral. Whoa, that's a cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, guys. No, it's okay. I'm going to need to get out in front. a couple of those around here. Yeah. More sponges. You know, on the last cruise, we used this expression, um... Pennies in the zoom bank. Pennies, uh, pennies, pennies. Nope, pennies, <laughs> pennies, pennies in the zoom bank. So like, if if uh, Herc is at the top of the Argus screen, you have time to do more things. You have 
you have pennies saved up where you can stop and look at something, but if Herc is falling out of the bottom of the screen, then you, you need to move. You, yeah, and you got to save up for our zooms. Sure. <laughs> who's, who's, whose quote was that? I think that was Gabby, but I think she got it from a scientist on a previous cruise. Oh, Rod. It's a good metaphor. Yeah. Like, uh, can I make a withdrawal for a zoom? I'm like, uh, no, you cannot. <laughs> You're in the de deficit. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Yeah, my bad. I was too focused on the video feed to check the position in the other monitor. No, no, it's, it's, <laughs> it's when you see something interesting, you want to stop and look at it. Totally. Yep. Yeah, we'll let you know. If, uh, we'll we'll say that you're in debt. I suppose. I like that analogy. <laughs> okay. <pretty good>. <laughs> <laughs> Works for me. Huh. Chris doesn't have an ID on uh, that arthropod either. Presumed arthropod. So. I think there's, there's something a cool weird sponge. with the games going on here, too. So, Chris Garage. is agreeing you see that, that in Argus? So those are either Ferrea yeah, or Hedera Reed yeah. sponges. Oh, yeah, I can see in the Atalanta view. It looks like oh, there's... Oh, you're right, Atalanta. Ooh, Ooh here we go. Black coral. Oh. Whoa, what's at the top? We got something big coming. That is so not, the, not the little shark guy? I can't no, really see the shape that pretty yet. thing. Oh, wow. Oh, that's really interesting. I don't know what that one is. It looks like it's a little it more sedimented here. It almost looks here. like those heterocone ones, but not quite. It has a weird, like, internal structure there. I'm going to just change my heading a little Go just do to... Do a partial zoom, please. Wow. Can we see yeah. the, the attachment one. to at some point? One the second. attachment point? Yeah, if if possible. Sure. Do you guys want lasers on or off? Is it corbellity? Um, maybe off for a second. Yeah. yeah I think we're going to get a couple of stills of this. Raj, you can go ahead and push on in a bit more, and we'll... See if we can see the base. Yeah. Black coral. That's a cool sponge there's underneath some, it. There's like an encrusting coral on it. Is that what's going on there? The purple? Oh, at the bottom. I think that might be zoanthids. Oh. Or not zoanthids, but uh, uh, one of the ones that looks polypy, and I never remember if they're zoanthids or if they're uh, uh, hydrozoans. Go ahead and come a little wide, please. Oh, wait. No, they are stolen in friends, I think. Interesting. All right, I'm going to keep moving, guys. All right. I think so. Pull wide. Yeah, thank keep, you. <coughs> keep moving. It's beautiful. Yeah, we can keep moving. Approach, this is enough. Another move. Same step, please. So is it just Whoa. me, or is it a little more sedimented here? It looks a little more sedimented. Yeah, it looks a little, a little it looks like there's some local variation in uh, where we're getting sediment so far. I'm going to put my heading back. And Reg. That. That might have something to do with some of the different distributions we're seeing, perhaps. I think different populations showing up in some different places. And Chris is saying that that sponge we saw has a stock, so it's probably a, a Sacrocalyx species. Hey, Leela, is this what we've been seeing? Quite a number of right here. I don't think so. I haven't noticed any of those, but maybe. Oh, and also, this sea star actually on this page looks a lot like what we've been seeing. The Corathrasterity, that white one. I haven't noticed those, but you could totally be right. Looks like there's like a Henrique off to the left. Oops. See, there's another example of it right here. See, Leela? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, maybe. We've been passing a number that looked like that. Oh, yeah, I hadn't noticed them. What was that called on there? Got to get a better light. 
Maybe we could get a zoom on one of the next ones we pass. Pedida day. Would you mind centering up there, please? Would you mind centering up on the sure. video? Sure. Thank you. What did you see? Uh, it was one of those uh, uh, sea stars again. Hmm. There's so much going on here. You'd look at what they get. I know. There's just so much happened. tiny stuff, too. It's hard to tell from just the flybys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some of those. I don't know what those are, but. Where? I'm not a biologist. Um, It's off the screen now. Some little kind of like whitish, stubby things. Hmm. I can't tell if they're a sponge or a coral. I'm seeing a few of them pop up here and there. Do they look like broken stalks? I can't really tell. Like that, that might be one here. Oh, that looks like oh, a small small coral, corals. Right? That's, yeah, that's the morphology I'm seeing. <coughs> what were the, like those the things you had, uh, oh, yeah. Justin? They're all the way over. Oh, I see right. the name of that. Spiny proof. You're gonna do a quick zoom there, please, video. Pedinity. That's okay. great. Good eye, though. Yeah, it's a nice cup coral there. Yeah. All right, full wide, please. And Justin, you said yours is the upper left here. Oh, I was just saying. I think there's more of the same cup corals along the same ridge. Like there's. Ah, uh, yeah. Roger that. And another one of those spiny, uh... Little urchin-looking guys. Yep. <laughs> Lita's got the name. Whoa, what is that in the bottom left? Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, it's we don't have too many pennies in the bank, though, do we? That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll get a quick picture of this guy. It looks like maybe some translucent sponges or something just mm -hmm. above it. Those very pretty. They are. All right, video, go ahead and push on in. Nice. Oh, anemone. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'll get you guys more stable here. Conchi With those. Continue the move. Had a reverse this is not. Uh, another move, same step. What's, what's that right there? Got any more zoom there, video? Wow. Oh, there's a crab hanging out. Yeah. A wee crab. Just a wee one. That's a gorgeous shot. It's pretty. Mm -hmm. All right, full wide, please. Huh. What is going on there? All right. Chris says... We have five seconds for a quick zoom. <laughs> Go ahead and push on in real fast. Yeah, thank you. Actinernus anemone is what we were just looking at. Well, we're going to point Chris. three. I just need to get out in front a bit. I've been a bit moving behind. Is that a it's crab or a squat point. lobster hanging out in there? Look like a squat lobster. I think so. Full wide, please. It's Where's hard the squat to tell. lobster? Uh, was it inside? It, yeah, it was just inside. All you can see is oh. the uh, is is its uh, arms. Cool. Didn't get a good look at the body. Do you know what that was, Leela? That we were. I didn't see the squat lobster. Oh, you mean the white thing? I don't know if that was a sponge. That was my. I was guessing that, but it. Not is that confidently. Is that a fan <laughs> coral? Maybe. No, I can't tell what that is. That looks spongy. I should not be the one talking about corals. I do. I know rocks. I don't know corals. Not well. 
Sako oh, Saint Victor crap. Gorgia. And that's another one of those Parapagurus. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, so we've been seeing lots of these. And this green slimy stuff. We had a comment that this rock looks a lot like lava. Val, do you want to talk about how it was formed? Um, sure, yeah. Um, this rock very much is lava. So um, this looks like uh, some pillow basalts that erupted a long time ago uh, and just kind of stacked on top of each other, lava flow after lava flow. That gives you that kind of like, like kind of bubbly appearance that you're seeing. And then, since these have sat on the uh, seafloor, we think, for multiple tens of millions of years, uh, they've, over time, slowly grown this uh, brown-black uh, crust, um, which is made out of uh, a lot of metals like iron and manganese. Sometimes yeah. there's some cobalt or some other uh, rare earth elements in it. So, right. um, in some places in the ocean, they get quite thick. But so far here, we're seeing at most a couple of centimeters of this crust over the rocks. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like a little surprise. You uh, get these rocks, and once you cut them open, that's when you find out much more about what's actually in these. Kind of missed my chance. I was looking at that weird purple color. Stock sponge. sponges. Yeah, these Is are all balasoma. These are some of the bigger ones we've been seeing. Oh, nice. Go ahead and do a quick zoom there, please. That's great. And then whenever they do zooms, I'll also try and wait for the shot to line up and for them to adjust and, and take some captures. very delicate shade of yellow on the head of that thing. Mm -hmm. Some of them get this like really kind of greeny, yellow greeny. Oh, really? Very cool. Full wide, please. Yeah, cup coral to the left, possibly. That says Osako, I think that's what it looks like. Mm -hmm. I'll trust you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. Look at that in the background. We've got more sponges. Yeah. Sea star, a couple of them. If you're curious about how big these objects are that we're looking at, uh, those two dots in the middle are 10 centimeters apart. So you can use that for a reference. Oh, that's cool on the left there. Yeah. yeah. This guy? No, there was something the in your left, port yeah. side. The purple one? The that, oh, we got that, that guy. That guy. Oh, yeah. Nice little Those stars. But cool from that angle. Another, I guess yeah. that's another sac saco calyx, maybe. Yeah, Chris was pointing out we we did pass an unstock crinoid earlier. There's some big sponges in the distance too. Yeah, this might be the sponge dive you were looking for. Wow. <laughs> Leila, Chris concurs, all the bolosomas you've been calling. Do you want to go ahead mm. and do a partial? So, Justin, I'm just checking out the pictures to look at the exposure here. Gusto um, cam up. It looks like it's doing Crouch. all right on these white, on the white, big white sponges. Great. Uh, okay, got to go. Bridge, this is now. Full white, please. And Chris. Step, step, please. That is a field of sponges. Mm -hmm. Very different distribution of uh, species than what we were seeing uh, down at King George. Hmm. 
Also very different uh, depth. Is that another unstopped crinoid? Another giant sponge. Whoa. Wow. We had a question about whether the stalk and the sponge are the same organism or if there are two different things. I believe they are all part of one organism. That would be my thought, but I am definitely not a sponge expert. Maybe we'll have the uh, ex experts weigh in here. Uh, Chris Kelly says, hmm. <laughs> so we have uh, something interesting incoming. Do you guys want to look at that one? Um, not sure yet. We have a minute. Okay. Wow, it looks like a rose. <laughs> it is a little pinkish, isn't it? No, I mean the one on the left, like the petals. It looks oh. like petals on oh, a rose. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It does, doesn't it? Do we want to get a closer look at that one? Yeah, let's take a look at the rose. Yeah, just for grins. A good Valentine's there Day card, right? <laughs> oh, my exactly. gosh, it would. <laughs> there is a lot going right, on go over here. Go ahead and push that in there, please. That is a complex bunch. Yeah. That's pretty. That's yeah. cool. It really yeah. Is. All right, pull away, please. So much life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's just beautiful. It's like a little town. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love this. Like Whoville. Yeah, it's very <laughs> Dr. Seussical. Yes. Ken Sulek is saying that um, at this depth, it is. Since gastropod shells are composed of alternating layer, layers of aragonite and calcite, at this step they start falling apart, and the calcite also dissolves. Thus, for deep-dwelling hermit crabs, anemones are a valuable replacement for gastropod shells. As they, as they say, life finds a way. Yeah. That's amazing. Uh-oh. Which one is that? What do we got, Chris? <laughs> What's the hmm for? Probably for that sponge. <laughs> I love the side profile of be. it. Because then you, you know, if you, if you reach out for something, I can like zoom in on it. So he says we might be looking at a demo sponge. That rose, Which that rose type. Demolition lover. sponge. <laughs> Sounds very, yeah, intimidating. <laughs> Is that the floor model? <laughs> <laughs> we are not finding any geology for you right now, Val. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I'm along for the ride here. Just sightseeing. <laughs> Is that a coral? We'll find some rocks uh, eventually. Yeah, what is that? that the yeah, primnoia? yeah, the one that's like a fan, with like oh. the ripples. Sure oh, looks cool. like it. I mean, it's a sponge to have a day job as a coral. <laughs> <laughs> Moonlighting. <laughs> Moonlighting as a coral. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Do you want, oh yeah, the very, very blank coral. Wow. Mm -hmm. Get a little closer. Call it a mohawk coral. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not scientific. Boy, <laughs> oh, please. Is that a Coralides, Chris? My lights are a little too faint to. Oh, they're much better. Oh, purple. I love when you see purple at the bottom of the ocean. It seems like a complete accident. <laughs> It really does. Like, what business did you have making that pigment? <laughs> I'll get a little out in front, and then uh, we can see one some more interesting things.
That one coral looks a lot like the Coralidae hemichorallium species uh, on the guide. Pretty sure this is not. What's our schedule Another for taking? Step. Sorry. Thank you. What's our schedule for taking eDNA samples on this dive? Uh, so we want to pair those with um, some manganese crust sampling. Um, we haven't found a they good place to do a yeah. grab for that just yet. So once we once we find some uh, loose rocks, that's going to be a big sampling priority. But right now we've got these lava flows that are. Uh, Pretty, pretty firmly in place, and uh, these are all attached to the seabed, so there's... Uh, they won't fit in the bio that, box. Yeah, that... <laughs> yeah, it's, Sorry, uh, Val. Oh, no, it's fine. <laughs> just making a fun of joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I just didn't catch the entire thing, so... <laughs> oh, Rog, Rog. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's basically rock bottom over here. No. <laughs> rock bottom. Wow, that's super orange. Yellow. Yellow. <laughs> The other Sorry. orange. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah, right. Yeah. Um, Beth is reminding us that um, we should also be collecting eDNA samples in uh, high population areas. And actually, oh. this looks like this might be a really good place to pull an iskin. It is so, that. so um, saturated. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Beth. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Push it in there, please. I think a little too much about the rocks sometimes. All the time. Look at that yellow. Yeah, that's stunning. Are those zoanthids? Covering coral? No, I mm -hmm. Are we pushing a skin here? I think they want a niskin. Yeah. Yeah, you want to go ahead. So, so. Okay, you want to do the niskin in a hot sec? Sure, sure. Are All right, we pull wide, please. I'm going to just continue up. Uh, Kylie's going to pull out the arm. And then, uh, but we don't need to stop the ship. You got craft power ready, and Raj. I will full This sample back. will be which uh, number? This will be sample 12. Okay. And which Niskin are we pulling? Uh, whichever one Kylie feels. Whatever one uh, ends up in my fingers. Sorry, it'll just be one second before I have a real answer. No problem. We'll let you get set up. All right, so we are 2.4 meters off. I can get a little closer here. And Let you are you rack camp. back? I'm full rack back, yeah. Rod rush. I think let's start with one this time. Wanna look a little up? Yeah. There we go. You got bubble. Okay. I am one meter off the deck. Index. Nice. Yeah, just nice wrist roll. Nice. Ready? Very nice. Eyes on the prize. Oh, it already pulled. Looks Raj. like it popped, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I almost have a short leash. That was one and a half meters off the deck there, Leela. Can you drop a target, Solomon? Yes, I did. Raj, Raj. Zero and two, right? I'm going to move ahead. The number should be 138 012. Lila. Nice. Uh, Chris is wondering if we can zoom the fish. Uh, Chris, sorry, we're a bit behind. Uh, Herc is a bit behind the Argus, so we'll push ahead and we'll find another fish for you. And it looks like they're saying the white coral we saw is an Enolopsamia rostrata. Perhaps the deeper ones in that genus tend to be white. The yellow was the uh, Alisamia rostrata, if I'm reading their notes correctly. Okay, just to confirm our sample log, uh, which Niskin bottle was that? Number one. Number one, thank you. You're welcome. All right, coming up a bit. Nice pull. Thank you. Hello. Well, sorry for my, uh, I didn't have an answer yet. I should have just said that. Oh, no, it's fine. Okay, sorry. <laughs> nope, we got, we got the answer we needed.
The scientists ashore are doing a little uh, looking up through their guides because that one mercurid we were looking at, the eel-like fish, had a very high uh, dorsal fin, which is a little unusual. So, Pakro, would you like to hold over here in waypoint one, or shall we continue to the next waypoint two? Keep it's moving. So pretty. Would you mind squaring up here again, please? Pakro, do you copy? Uh, yeah. Um, could we could we keep moving a little bit uh, slowly, just to uh, you know uh, get an idea of what all we're looking at around here? Okay. So There's keep a moving lot going on. Yeah. yeah. More to south. I've never been in a place that had this much going on all at once. So Val, we're gonna we're holding off up here then? Is that the No, we keep moving. We keep moving? Okay, Raj. Yeah. So but I will be moving to one eight zero. One eight okay. zero, Raj. Yep. Roger. Sounds good. And Val, do you want us to slow our speed over ground so that we see more things or do we just wanna keep it at point three? Um, let's slow it down yeah, to about point two knots. Raj. Copy that. Thanks. Bridge, this is Nav. Uh, can we move on bearing 180, 50 meters on speed uh, 0 0.2 knots? Yes, uh, 0 0.2 knot. 180. Yes, please. I think he said 108 meter, 108. No, 180. I think that was. No, yeah, I think he repeated back to you 108. Yep. Great, thank you. For just a second. Yeah, go ahead. So I'm starting to see some samples that look, are starting, uh, some rock samples that are looking a little looser. Yeah. So we'll uh, keep an eye out for a good place to sample that isn't going to disrupt uh, these communities. Great. Looks like there's another big sponge coming our way via the uh, Oh, Atlanta. sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Some crowlids. Did I this is now? Carly, mind coming up a bit on the winch there? Data, this is now. Oh, there's another one for you, Chris. Okay. Oh. Wow. Gonna turn down the iris a little bit. Nice. That's a big one. Yeah. Was There's a red something to the right hand corner there. It's kinda yeah. interesting as well. Looks like a coral that's sort of knocked against the rock, perhaps. Yeah. Wow, great exposure level on this. Really nice. It looks beautiful. Can I turn off the, the, the lasers there, Kylie, for a moment? Yeah. Thank you. Do you want it off with porch? Uh, I think it looks good as it is. Slamming shot, that's cool. Nice job, video. Go back around this way again. Did you guys get a couple of stills on that? Perfect, thanks. <laughs> yeah, Chris is saying what I was just thinking, that glad he's not the one that has to annotate this part of the dive. <laughs> There's so much going on. It's a very dense community, yeah. Beautiful. It is amazing. Nice. Nice shot there, Kylie. Thank you. Quite the thriving uh, community on this uh, very old, presumably, uh, sea mount. And uh, Rhett, you full wide now on Herc? Look at that. Some basket stars. Too. That's great, thank you. Here's our another little fish for us. Wow. Amongst all the incredible colors. Yeah. yeah. We've got a whole rainbow going here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, so pretty. <laughs> I've, I mean, of all the cruises I've been on, I've never seen a landscape like this one, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's very true. It's beautiful. Yeah. None of it's very tall, which is kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. They must be getting what they need lower down. How competitive do you think they are for resources around here? Because I'm seeing what looks like a lot of uh, skeletal material, too. Fish. Yeah, we've been following okay. that one around. Following that one? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's blending in. I must not have seen it. <laughs> Spending too much time looking at the rocks. <laughs> Val, I appreciate that you're still looking at the rocks, even though we're <laughs> amongst all these beautiful sponges and corals. There's a lot to look at. <laughs> yeah, part of my brain is still like constantly on the lookout for something we can grab. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, Beth and Ryan. Uh, they're talking, uh, they're mentioning that we are what at um, an oxygen, we're, we're somewhere in an oxygen minimum at this depth, so there's not a lot of uh, oxygen dissolved into the water. So we're kind of at the base of that oxygen minimum yeah. zone. Wow, look how crusty that looks. So that may have something to do with the size limitations too, possibly. Mm. We're starting to see more of those uh, Yellow guys, they're corals, right? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. What would you say that is? That was a pretty abrupt change. Lila, what are you calling that coral? The yellow. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. This is stunning. Yeah. What do you guys like the lasers back on? Um, yeah, let's get an idea of Go how ahead, big these bridge. are. The substrate does look a lot looser, but... Yeah. Say again, uh, bridge? Yeah, we're pretty close to waypoint one. So let's keep an eye out for something that's loose, something... You do. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if there's anywhere safe to. Yeah. To grab. Uh, the bright yellow fans are in up. Let's see if I say this wow, right. Wow. In all in all ups. Um, yeah. Reg. I will make a note. Oh, who we got Ooh, coming here? We got here. Oh my Chimera. goodness. Chimera. Hey, a chimera, oh, oh my gosh. Oh, so <laughs> cool. Do you want to go ahead and give a little zoom in? Yeah. Awesome. Such amazing creatures. Not very often, yeah. It's a pretty special sight. Very. With a tiny little halosaur or something right below it. Can't quite make out its head. Oh, yeah. Maybe that's not a hellosaurus. Can't quite tell. Wow, good angle. Yeah. Wow. He's doing all the beauty shots for us. <laughs> sure don't back into a cliff, though. Yeah. Oh, now you're good. <laughs> Christopher's grabbing little video segments for this. Oh, wow, even better. All right, so we have a request um, at the next opportunity uh, to zoom cool, in on the... We keep uh, moving the same when it... Uh, Sorry, go ahead, Val. Zero. No problem. 
Uh, yeah, uh, Chris and Osaka are interested in looking at one of the yellow corals Fresh when we get now. a chance. Sure thing. Thanks. Another move, 180, 50 meters. Thank you. We had a question about why the corals would have such bright colors in a place where there's no light. Hmm. They're asking the wrong room. <laughs> Yellow corals. You want to zoom you? Yeah, I think one of these. Which one? Which one? Pick one. You've got 800. <laughs> <laughs> the um, really, really bright one up yeah. yonder. I'm not sure. Yeah, do you guys want the really highlighter yellow, or do you want the pastel yellow? I yes. think they want the, the pastel yellow to start with. Mellow Raj. yellow, Raj. Mellow yellow. But if they want to look at the bright yellow one, we Thank might be able much. to do that, too. Raj, I'll get myself parked here. Set ourselves up nicely here. Yeah, so um, the, the colors that you see on some of these animals is... All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Um, it doesn't serve any uh, evolutionary advantage or disadvantage. It's oh. just um, it, it's just uh, some pigment that is uh, in in the uh, I am not coming up with the right word. It's it, uh, it's just part of their pigmentation. Mm -hmm. yep. Kyle, you want to rack back a little bit on the yeah. pan and tilt on this guy? Yeah, you can push it. in a little bit tighter there now. Retract a smidgen. I should uh, clarify, Asako, had actually, I didn't finish saying what she had ID'd, Thank so you. the... Uh, you got it. Go ahead, go ahead and push on in a bit there, please, right? She's saying that the less bright yellow uh, coral fans are actually octocorals. Oh. But the bright yellow fans are the enolopsomia corals. Do you guys need to tie it on the polyp uh, for proper ID? You want to go ahead and full on in there, please, right? Oops, sorry. Maybe that's all we got. Is that full one? Okay. Reg? Cool. Thank you. All right, is that good for folks on shore? I think so. Yep. Roger that. Full wide, please. They have a bit of a delay, so they can't really um, tell us right away, I think. But Ooh, let's, let's take a... Do you guys <laughs> want to look at this pretty guy? Or no? Which one? Yeah, let's do it. Center screen. You want to push on in there, please, yeah. again? I'll do a slight pan to the right. It's gonna be bouncy for a sec. Okay, uh, Sako is interested in the uh, deep red fans too. I think I saw one uh, toward the right, lower right of the screen uh, when we're zoomed out. Roger that. Full wide, please. Lower right. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's behind us. Um, oh, yeah, that might be a difficult angle to get. Yeah, oh. there's one up above to the right there, though. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can get uh, see if we can get a good angle on one of those. Sure thing. Cool. Thank you. Oh yeah, there's a big one. Oh. Okay, so the pink ones are ones we were thinking might be hemichorallium. Do you think there's equal amount of coral to sponges or s are you sensing this that is really sponge heavy although we did go through sponge. that patch that had quite a few of those acanthogorgids or Wait, is there a name for a group of sponges right, or go no? ahead and push on in i feel like a we always sink. call them gardens is it's it like really a bathtub of sponges <laughs> <laughs> a sink oh, of a little sponges. wide there please oh look at that um that's, that's a different kind there. of sponge than what we've been seeing right. looks okay. like it has a like a brittle oh, star this almost well, yeah, looks an like a pair Gorged. Sorry, one more bump. Then you guys don't. There no you go. problem. That is beautiful. Yeah. Huge basket star in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uriallid. A couple more cup corals behind it. All right. Um, you can come full wide there, please. Every shot is amazing. 
It is. Yeah, truly. All right, Rhett, you can also go ahead and push past the little glare in the corner there. Thank you. We had a question about, do we ever put a UV light on Herc to see what things might have different colors under UV? Ooh. Um, short answer, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. we did some like strobing at one point and we used a low light camera um, to capture any type of um, bioluminescence. That was Brennan Phillips back in maybe 2018, but I'm not terribly sure about any other types of excitation lights, you know, um, at least in the recent years. The texture of these rocks are really fascinating. Val, does that just mean that it's a newer lava flow? I don't know. Sorry. Chris and Asagor uh, requesting the next pink coral we see if we could get a zoom if possible. Sure thing. Yeah, another a couple questions about the chimera that we saw. One was, is the chimera blind? And another one was, uh, whether our lights affect the eyes of fish down here. <laughs> All good up there, are we? Um. I'm sure that for the organisms that can see, the lights are a bit stunning to them. Um, but I don't know about that specific chimera. I think I see a little squat yeah, lobster. Yeah, squat lobster perched up there. Mm -hmm. Brazingids. Ken Sulak was saying, yellow is ideal for absorbing blue light. No sunlight survives below 1100 meters, but bioluminescent organisms emit blue light that can excite fluorescence. So if the ROV was equipped with the appropriate light and the cameras with appropriate filters, you could, you may find that these yellow corals fluoresce and that fluorescence may actually serve a purpose. We can't, we can't see it, but animals can. So there may be an advantage in being yellow also orange, pink, or red. Would you like to keep moving uh, towards waypoint three, or do you would like to hang over this area for a bit? Um, let's let's keep moving forward slowly. Can we okay. can we do about point two knots? We are moving within point two knots. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So we'll move again, 180. So I'm still looking. Bridge, this is nav. Uh, another move, 180, 50 meters. Oh no. Thank you. I think I just see. We're finding a lot of biology on this dive. Uh, you may be wondering why we're not stopping for everything. Well, uh, our main focus right now is actually on the rock uh, samples that we are looking for. 
in terms of sampling. We're trying to get as much video of the biological specimens as possible. But um, one of our key objectives is uh, sampling of the rocks, both for biological and geological uh, sample information. Yeah, so I'm uh, on the lookout for uh, any rocks that. that we might be able to yes. grab, and we haven't seen we haven't seen any good targets for rocks just yet. But I'm wondering whether uh, one of the next waypoints uh, on our uh, on our planned track is going to start uh, giving us some looser stuff to work with. So we're we're coming over a small, really local. Uh, peak and we're gonna start moving into a uh, saddle area where there's there's a better chance we can find some uh, good material for uh, microbio and geology it looks like the uh, species distribution has changed again back to what mainly sponges mm -hmm. yep at the moment yep Val you notice all those little pockets in the lava Mm -hmm. uh, what would that be minerals that eroded out sooner or what, what would cause those or just air bursts or like some of those little pukas yeah not sure we passed another one of those fun eel like fishes I didn't get a good look at it aren't, aren't those rat tails right she's now. not listening Its tail seemed a little more blunted than a rat tail, but... Oh, Rutch. That may have something to do with uh, just how, how the manganese uh, crust is growing. Those just might be areas where it hadn't grown in yet. I don't oh. know. I don't know if there... I don't know about animals that? that can burrow into those holes or not, but... That stuff, because that crust is pretty tough. Wait, hold on. Uh, you want to <laughs> give a shout out? Yeah, I'd imagine so. Just want to give a shout out to Evelyn. Thanks for tuning in. Tell Ooh. us who Evelyn is. Yeah, to tell us who she is now. Uh, she's my friend Johnny's five-year-old daughter. All right. Oh, All right. Right. Cool. Thanks That's for tuning in, Emily. Cool. Evelyn. Hello, Evelyn. Yeah. Uh, oh, I've got another one there. What is that? Yeah. If you want, we can also stop the mezzo heads and then restart them and restart that program if you'd like. What's that big red thing coming up on the right? I think it oh. might be an anemone. That is big. Mind throwing the lasers on? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, Levan, just for um, planning in the next few minutes, um, as we approach waypoint three, it's in a saddle area, and that might be a neat place to uh, stop and kind of uh, look around for a little bit longer. Good, good. Uh, okay. Really quick zoom for there, the right? waypoint three, right? Yeah, once we hit waypoint three. Excellent. Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Copy that. Thanks. That is pretty big. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's very big. I'm going to have to go to the ID guide for this one, unless somebody else knows. Oh, Chris, if you want a sample, speak up. We'll get to the rocks. They'll, they'll work eventually. Go mm -hmm. away, please. Yeah, I would yeah, probably just go ahead and restart the whole program if you'd like. Yeah, we'll turn out the mesos first, I think, and then cycle power. Is that one of those actinostolidae? I always say it wrong, but scientists can help me. <laughs> Reg. Yeah, 
Yeah, it has to be like the her cargus. Her, yeah. Raj, I see. Might be our issue. Sorry. Sorry, back row, we're just troubleshooting one of our sonars. My goodness, look at that. It's just a pitch packed. Ken keeps giving us, Ken Sulek is giving us some more information about the bioluminescence uh, and fluorescence. Eddie Witter, hopefully I'm pronouncing that last name right, uh, is an expert on marine organism bioluminescence and fluorescence. And uh, Ken is saying that he ran into, ran one ocean exploration cruise that showed a lot of organisms fluorescing in deep water. It's going to be pretty flat here for a few minutes, right? Looks like it. Yes. Just as we're troubleshooting our mesos. Um, it is sure almost flat, yeah. Yeah, great. So, Chris, you're saying that that large anemone we saw is an actinostolid folded? Uh, Raj. And Ken gave us some nice info on the Chimera. I'll try to share in between. We'll keep moving, Sam. 180. Um, Don't wait. Yeah, you want to stand by for a minute. I okay. want to get the mesos back up there. Reg. Uh, uh, thank you. All right, both should be on. There's just. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. These are a lot looser. So chimeras have very large and fully functional eyes. That tall upright dorsal fin spine is poisonous. Hmm. Uh, Ken was say, asking us to notice that they normally hold the long uh, tail straight and swim instead with their pectorals beating like wings. The tail head straight has to do with maintaining a symmetrical electrosensory field to the right and left of the body. No, both of them are on. I turned them both on. Camaras and sharks have a system of electroreceptors which may be used to direct the fish to its prey. Looks uh, good. By uh, the prey interrupting the electrical field on either the right or left side of the body. Oh, that is a stack up. <laughs> wow. Must be some choice uh, food in that little section. All right, so I'm starting to see uh, some signs of rocks uh, being a little easier to grab. So as we approach the saddle area, so I'm on the lookout for a good place to put down and get one of those. Roger that. Yep. So I'll bet we'll find some. I have a feeling we'll find some good uh, I think that's sample okay. sites it's near the this saddle. It's a little hot. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No worries. Um, yeah, I think we'll. I have a feeling we're going to find Roger. something workable in the saddle area. Okay, now that we got the mesos back up, you can go ahead and call another move. Oh, okay, good. Chris, Chris this is Nav. Another move, same step. And then Val, if you see anything, um, so you said this is the right area about. Um, so we'll call another move and just cancel it whenever you see that we can pick up these rocks. Is that okay? Sounds great. Thanks. The amount of biomass on these rocks is just incredible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whenever you ask them for any move, your eye on the digging so here right to make sure that he oh copied yeah. them right. Yeah. Let's take a look. Is that one of those sea spiders? Looks like a... Mm. Oh no, I don't think so. More crab-like. 
Go ahead and push on in, please. Squat lobster. Squat lobster. Roger. Carvastylidae. Or what's the, what's the that larger? Looks good. Yeah, that looks good, Carrie. Let me remember that. Thank you for troubleshooting that. All right, pull wide, please. See anything loose in there? It's still kind of dense, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we also don't want rocks that are too covered in biological stuff. That might be a hard thing to come by around this area. Yeah, I, I have a feeling you're exactly right about that. So are we seeing more of those sponges that have the unusually short stalks that uh, came up in chat earlier? You could. Would you mind giving me a little bit of tether there? <laughs> There's another fun little squall lobster crab right there. Just for fun. Lila's non-stop trying to keep up with all this data logging. So much <laughs> yeah, <fun. laughs> mostly, mostly we've been seeing similar stuff, so I haven't been ha having to go too crazy, but I am trying to keep track of what people in the chat are mentioning some of the more specific stuff that we've been seeing. Is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chris went back and uh, that large anemone we were talking about, he was putting in the genus Act Actistonola. which was last uh, documented in the emperor's, the emperor chain of. Which is not too far from where we are now, so far north and uh, west. In yeah. Yeah. Val, why is this one so shiny compared to the others around it? Yeah, that that looking at that look one, <laughs> almost <laughs> like wet, <laughs> as if they're not all wet. So when we bring rocks that look like that back into the lab, those are pretty, uh, pretty solid manganese crusts. They uh, don't; those are less prone to uh, crumbling. I've found compared to uh, uh, some of the other textures we get, which can be much more friable or fragile. So that one's just gonna, like solid. I don't know why that varies from rock to rock, though. There's a little black coral there up yeah, at the top. Yeah, the pathies. Like the pathies. Oh, yeah. We haven't seen many of those this time. Yeah. No, we've just seen a few bathopathies, but not many. Uh, yeah, Chris is adding on to that uh, location comment. He, we're he says he thinks we're still on the Hawaiian side of the boundary since many of the animals are similar to those further south. But we are seeing some that don't occur further south, such as that anemone and some of the sponges. So we're maybe in a transition Ooh, point. Look at that sponge. We haven't mm -hmm. seen one of those yet. Which one would you the like to do? one? It's bottom center. This one here? Yeah. yeah. Just a zoomy. Get a push out in there, please. I think I saw that in his guide. Yeah. It's a gorgeous st structure. I always yeah. forget if those are in, I think that's in the Euplectility. Thanks, Zoomy. See, Ryan oh, says please. that's a Euplectilid, maybe. Yeah, that's, 
That's a cool name. Yep. That looks a little looser, but it's still... Yeah, I'm know. looking for something that isn't somebody's home, too. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with that. I know. I know. Yeah. That's going to be really hard, so, yeah. I wonder, we're, like, right on the ridge. I mean, I don't know if you want to go too far anywhere, but I wonder if, like, off to the side of the ridge it's less... There's less spawn in. No idea. Maybe. But you think the looser rocks are going to all be up top on the saddle, right? Otherwise, it would kind of fall down that slope. Yeah. Yeah, we might find some looser stuff there. Uh, okay. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Yeah, push on in there, please, Rhett. Oops, sorry. Over. Coyotenoides. <laughs> Looks like I got a little shrimp on the far left of the screen, just hanging out in his little cave. We got this beautiful botryoidal texture on the crusts, it's just we can't grab any oh of right, it. Please. Rigadrella. Well, this is unusual. This is pretty quiet, biologically speaking. Hey, Rhett. Oops. Appreciate this is not. Oh, that's a good point on Chris's end. We don't okay. have the bio encrusting restrictions. Another move, same step. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's Thank fair. You. Just trying to err on the side of caution yeah. too. It's like I don't like the idea of just like setting down in the middle of a big community oh, yeah, either. No, totally. Yeah. That's just not cool. <laughs> This is the first time for me seeing all these vase sponges. They're really cool. Thank you. And they have like along the top, these like really intricate, thin, spindly spicules that kind of almost might like be cover the last that top of that vase. At least the Rigodrella will be holding position. Roger that. Good. Yeah, if we find something that looks pretty loose around here, this is going to be where we're going to go for it. Yeah, Val, I don't know if we're going to, this looks pretty together, you know. Mm -hmm. So well, we can try poking around. Maybe there's some fractured piece somewhere, but um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll be on the lookout. <coughs> Is that a, our favorite bolosoma? Mm -hmm. Yep, it is. I just like it because of the odd shape of it. I just like the E.T. thing, but <laughs> they always reminded us of E.T. Yeah. What is this fuzzy... Is that a sponge? Mm. Oh, coming up in the Could center push there? On in, please. It's about 20 centimeters across. Is that like Almost. the... Almost. It's big. That's is that like the Walterius kind of no. stuff? I have no, no idea. I don't know. It's... Uh, Got any more zoom there, right? Try to get you a steady oh, yeah, shot. It does look spongy because of that scent, what it has in the center. That yeah. looks very distinctly spongy, but I have no idea which one that is. I'm going to wait to hear what the yeah. folks ashore Full say. Full wide, please.
Oh. Oh. Ken gave us a little more info on chimeras as well. I'll share in a bit. What is that? Mm, this might be a good place to poke around. Um, yeah, it looks like it. That's probably big, but we can see if it's loose. Oh. Maybe something here. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a lot bigger than we want. Uh, scratch that. Right, right. I would hold position here. Yeah, please. Bridge, this is Nav. Mm. Hold position here, please. Thank you. Can you see, does that look loose to you? Might be. Uh, Might not be. That does, but I'm that's not. That's big. It's 20, 25 centimeters. At least. Beth likes it, this spot. Uh, yeah, I agree, Beth. Yeah, let's let's poke around here and see if we can find something to pick up. Sure thing. Ooh, look at that basket star up there. Wow. Sure oh. thing. Not joking. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, we can sit down. Awesome. This sponge in front of the porch has a associate in the middle. Oh yeah, good eye. Mm. Or talking about over here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, nice. What Maybe are squatties? you? Oh, condo. <laughs> totally. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I only have a toe on here because I don't want to sit on anything. So Kylie, you want to grab out that minute? Here come the pros. Yeah, balancing like this is uh, that's uh, that takes a lot of technique to to grab. Are you full wide, please? Thank you. Um, yeah. Jeez, Louise. I'm gonna turn off that porch light for a minute there. Raj. Gonna iris open a bit. Can you tell us straight for what you think is a, maybe a good bit? Uh, sure. So this one might okay. be a candidate if it's loose, and then the one where you have the lasers on it just above it. Raj. That's another potential candidate, I think. Okay. Unless it's stuck. Okay. Um, can you rack forward? I'll do a little pop, but I don't want to go too far forward. Raj. Can we zoom a little bit? That's good. Nice. Uh, I think your grip force might be like four right now. Come on, get darker. Okay. Um, how do I, so I select it? Yeah, so it's like grip force and then nine. you probably want like a nine. Yep. Nine. Raj. Okay. Okay. I'll hold the vehicle as good as I can up up here. So Chris Kelly just confirmed for us that the sponge we were looking at is uh, oh, yeah. Yes. Oka. <laughs> Are you <try> rotating? <laughs> yeah, let's get it. And it did have some uh, black corals growing on it. So if you notice that, good eye. Nice. Beautiful. Oh, oh that's a great size. Nice grab. Thank you. Nicely done. Put it in front of the camera and for a little rotate. Can we yeah. do a little yeah. slow spin on this one? For some reason, yesterday the pictures were coming out blurry, even though you were going really slowly. Raj. Thank you. Val, are you taking this one for you or for Beth? Uh, this one's a little more, a little bit more okay. angular. Um, I haven't seen any uh, obviously loose botryoidal samples. Do you want to center it up and then we'll get? Yeah, I had, yeah. To, I had to index it. Roger that. Can you zoom a little? That's good. So sorry, uh, back row, where are we going to go with this guy? Um, over to starboard side, right? It's for you, Val. Stab it. Uh, uh, yes. Yep. Roger that. That's going to be 013, right? 013, correct. Yeah. Oh, we had a question about whether these structures Oops. could be uh, hollow. Small or nothing. With the <laughs> That's great. Thank you, okay, Kylie. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I got oh, it. There I were nice little pauses in between. <laughs> Okay, Beth's saying something, so oh, sorry. Um, we'll give her okay. a second to get the message up here. Is that a halt on putting it away? Is yeah, let's just hold it for a couple seconds. Rod, rod, rod. Halted. Okay, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, we can put this in side bio. Um, sure. If we can get another rock here along with a uh, water sample, uh, that should be the next order of business. Roger that. Okay, all right, excellent. 
Whichever one's easiest, Kylie. Trey coming out. Raj, Raj. But maybe one of the smaller ones. Thank you. Yeah, I think that'll fit. Trey is full out. Going, switching salvos now. Raj, Raj. We'll also try to get for Beth sample a more reasonable size than in the first dive because both of those ended up being either too large sorry, or too sorry, small. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to uh, make an adjustment. Ah, Moving. sorry. And I don't want it to be my elbow up, but I'm just I'm stuck here for one second. Okay, I just need to adjust my life. I just want to elbow down without dropping the thing in anywhere. So I just wanted to make an adjustment sure. in my in my real life. Sure. Yeah. Maybe try aiming for A there. Yeah. Like resting your. I I can. I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Open. Nice. 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 All right. Sorry, nice. sorry, sorry. Get out of there. <laughs> just do. Yep. If you just wrist over. Yeah, that works too. Coming okay. in. Beth, Beth said she'd like a rock here too, even mm -hmm. if not super patriarchal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, do you see one you like? Um, you might wanna you might wanna sh go down a bit on your because you're above the bar. So go down a bit on the elbow. Let's yeah, just give I, him a minute. I, oh. Switching over. Okay, so I don't know if this is too tricky an angle uh, for the manipulator, but if one of those is loose, try that. Yeah, maybe the one kind of the bottom of it. Um, yeah. This one. Yeah, I think that okay. one's probably better. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can give that one a try. That one looks too big. Try to get the Goldilocks rock here. Not too big, not too small. 